Welcome back to our video series on the Play Framework using Scala. We left off last time with a login screen that uh, seemed to work almost, but our list of items wasn't popping up. And I made a few changes offline to fix that. So we now get our one item that happens to be in the database. And I want to show you what it was that I, I did. Um, instead of setting the visibility the way that I had done previously, I changed it so I actually make this a JS dynamic, which allows me to interact directly, uh, and then I can call hidden. And so I basically made it more like what we had with our original JavaScript. I guess that was technically that code right there. Uh, the reason for doing this, it turns out that style hidden doesn't collapse the same way that the HTML hidden does. Note that this is actually a good thing for you to see. If there are times where you need to do something, you know it exists in the JavaScript, and it's just it isn't part of the facade that was set up for Scala.js, convert it to a JS dynamic, and that is enabled by this import right there, and you can literally put whatever you want there, and it will go straight through to the JavaScript. Now, note, you've lost your safe type checking, so you really don't want to do this uh, a whole lot, but um, there are situations where, it, where it's helpful. So that makes it so that we have exactly the same behavior that we had in version 3 uh, and I guess in version well, no, version 4 was React. So we're getting the exact same behavior that we had for, for version 3. Our loading is finding all of these things. This delete doesn't exist yet. Um, but I've hit the point where I should also know I got rid of the uh, cores uh, on, on here. We had a, a method and a mode. I got rid of the mode on this as well, just trying to simplify things. Because we could keep doing this, converting a whole bunch of code from the JavaScript over to Scala with these fetch commands, but they're all going to be really similar. Now, the two we've written actually differed, in that this one was a post and this one was a get. Uh, and of course, what they did when they parsed the things was different as well, but I'd really like to get rid of duplicate code. So I'm going to make a new file in here, and I am going to make a file called fetchjson.scala, and it is going to have an object in it by that same name. And inside of here, let's make a fetch method. Now, I want this to be generic enough that it can handle all of the fetches that we're going to do here. And it turns out in we're going to make another version of our task list, and it's going to have fetches too. It's part of why I put this in a separate file. So this call here passed in some data of you know, the type of our data was a user data, and it got back a Boolean. This one didn't pass in anything, which we could consider to be a unit or an empty string or something like that, and it got back a sequence of task item. So clearly the types are varying between here, and for our fetch call we had one type of data we were sending in and another type of data that we were getting back. And so I'm actually going to put two type parameters on our fetch, A and B, for the input type and the output type, what we're sending to them. Another thing that differed between the two was the URL. Every time we make these calls we're giving it a different URL to go to. The data that we're sending across is of type A and when it works we have I want to do something with it and so when it works I want to take the type B that I get back and call a function pass that B value into it and I don't care what it does. Uh, it might also be nice to have something so that we can specify what is going to happen on our errors. Uh, so a JS error to unit, so that if something goes wrong, that will happen. Okay. Uh, this will do nothing. Um, it will just give us back unit and it does the fetch operation and will either call success or it will call error. So these are using callbacks here. 
we'll start writing the code. You know, it turns out this won't work, but but you know, it's it's a good start. So let's copy the stuff that we had from our first version of where we were doing a fetch in here. We made our headers. Uh, that stays the same, CSRF token, that's happy. Our data is actually the data that's being passed in now. So we don't declare a data inside of here. Um, let's see, we probably need a number of imports. So headers is being imported. This fetch object is being imported. This is now the URL. Ah, also our method varied. So in addition to the URL and the data, we're going to pass in method, which is of type, and over here I can probably see it's an HTTP method. Okay, and so this gets replaced with just method. Uh, the CSRF token looks like it's going to have to be passed in as well. That is a string. Okay. Uh, reassignment to val, that's because we don't yet have a request in it. We need our JSON. Now, here we have a real error. This isn't just a missing import. I guess I can do missing import there. This one's real, and it's the fact that in order to do this, we needed to have the ability to write stuff out. Uh, similarly, when we do our parse and from JSON, we're going to need to have a read in. So I need arguments for reads and writes, but I don't want to have to pass them all the time. And here I can use a nice syntactic element of Scala. It's actually this line is a bit long for you to read. And I am going to curry this function, and I'm going to pass in an implicit argument list. And it is going to contain the reads and writes. So I want to pass in a writes, which is a writes of A, and a reads, which is a reads of B. Okay. So now we should have the ability to be able to do that parsing. Uh, flat map is not a member of, indeed. We need this helpful little import here that converts promises to futures so that we can work with Scala futures. Uh, because we are doing something with a future, I have this funny feeling we need our execution context, which we could add to our implicit parameters, actually. Um, Okay, document, well, we now, okay. Now we've hit the point where this is actually what's supposed to happen on success. And bool is a horrible uh, name for this also, and that's the wrong type, right? The uh, type that we are getting back is type B. I guess I could do that. Success of B. And when this fails, we want to call error of E. Okay, right now this compiles. So this took a lot of our boilerplate code and, and got rid of it and allows us to pass in the things that, that should vary. Okay, so the goal here is I should be able to type in fetchjson.fetch and let's see. What are the first thing that we want is the URL. The second thing that we want is our CSRF token. Then we need the method, which in this case is post. Um, after a method, we have, so the headers are being built here, method, the data that we want, which we have actually this variable, if I move it up here, data will exist. 
and after data is just what we do on success and what we do on error, which are two functions. The success one is this. And so this would be bool rocket and some curly braces for success and e rocket and some curly braces for our failure case. Our success case was supposed to do this code. And our failure case was a not very informative print statement, but at least it'll let us know. Okay, no JSON deserializer found for type any. Uh, we might have to be explicit, let's say, so the deserializer is, so it can figure out the type of data here, but it's having a hard time figuring out type of bool because it just doesn't know what this is. So we are going to explicitly tell it that that is a Boolean. Okay, once again, it knows the type of data because data was declared here, it's a user data, but this could have been anything and Scala has to know what it is because we didn't tell it. That is the generic argument in here. Okay, so now I should be able to, and we'll start off, I should be able to do that, and I've replaced it with that code there. And we should have the same behavior. It compiles. There we go. And that means that we can delete all of this. We can do a similar type of thing down here. I'm actually going to do that offline, and I will make it so that load tasks uses our fetch JSON so that we get rid of that a lot of that boilerplate. And then I'll come back in the next video and we'll write delete and add and make it so that our, and I guess log out and make it so that our, our application is completely uh, operational.